I would go to jail in Pakistan just a few months after 9-11. This just in, you are looking at a, obviously a very disturbing live shot there. That is the World Trade Center and we have unconfirmed reports this morning that a plane has crashed into one of the towers. And me being the only American there wasn't easy. Someone put a 5,000 rupee bounty on my head. People would try to collect all the time. I was in more fights than I can count. I've been stabbed. Someone firebombed my cell. Hi, my name is Eric Ade. I'm a poker player, producer, actor, stunt coordinator, and stuntman. My life is a little different than most. I'm the youngest of six boys, yet all my brothers consider me their big brother. When I was in third grade, I was run over by a school bus. I was told that I wouldn't make it through the night. Then I was given a very small chance of making it through the week. My pelvis was shattered like a glass jar. I've had over 50 surgeries from the age of eight to the age of 15. When I was 12, I did my first movie. Uh, I was an extra on a movie with Christina Applegate called Across the Moon. And I knew I wanted to be in Hollywood. I knew I wanted to be in the entertainment industry. As soon as I turned 18, I knew I wanted to get out of the Antelope Valley and I, I moved to LA as soon as I could. I lived in this place called Eagle Rock. And even though I, I was working as an actor, I was getting small parts on Nickelodeon shows, CW shows. Work wasn't full time for me, so I had to pick up jobs, side jobs. And one of my side jobs was working as a personal trainer at the World Gym in Burbank. Well, one of my clients was a very successful Armenian businessman. He would hire young people to travel around the world for him, importing expensive leather goods, and he'd pay them for it. I knew this guy for a while before I would finally agree to take a trip for him, and it would be one of these trips right after 9-11 that I would find out that I was really being used to smuggle narcotics. A few months after 9-11 happened, no one wanted to make trips, understandably, and the trip that would end up uh, sending me to jail wasn't even supposed to be my trip. It was supposed to be one of my older brother's trips, and uh, he backed out when he found out it was to Pakistan. Normally the trips would be to Turkey. I, I always say I'm glad it was me that it happened to. I, I know I'm glad it was me that it would have happened to because I, I know I don't think my brother would have been able to get through it. I would go to jail in Pakistan just a few months after 9-11. I would be the only American in a prison meant to house only 1,800, but it was overcrowded. There were over 6,000 prisoners there, hundreds coming and going every day. And me being the only American there wasn't easy. The first nine and a half months that I was in jail, I spent on death row. And the reason I was on death row is because the, the bounty that somebody had put on my head and people kept trying to collect it. The superintendent at the time figured that was the safest place for me. So while on death row, I met some prisoners who were there for mostly murder. One of the prisoners I would meet though, and he was there for, for killing 11 of his wife's family members. Him and his wife fell in love without their family's consent, and they had to go into hiding. Well, while they were in hiding, their families were feuding with each other. They were uh, blaming each other for hiding the other, and they were killing each other. What brought Murad out of hiding was his mother and sister were gang raped by his wife's family members and uh, killed by let, having their breasts cut off and bleeding to death. So Murad set up an ambush and killed 11 of his wife's family members. On death row, Murad was very kind to me. Now, one day I get called early in the afternoon and Murad had planned this whole meal for us. He had chicken, he had Pepsi, he had sweet dishes. Everything wasn't spicy. In Pakistan, they love spicy food. I personally have always not liked spicy food. I asked Murad, what's the occasion? He said, no occasion, just hanging out. He would have had to have bribed a lot of guards to get this kind of meal into jail. I hung out in his cell all day that day. And when I went back to it, was called back to my two cell, I said, hey Murad, I'll see you next week. He said, inshallah. And uh, he ended up being hung the next day. He shared his last meal with me. He had it prepared so that I'd enjoyed it, not him. And he didn't tell me. After six months, I had a DEA agent come to the prison and uh, talk to me about uh, the man that set me up. Up until this point, they hadn't been able to find him. They couldn't find him because of the name. And the only reason they, they were able to find him was because six months after I was arrested, a Swedish woman working for him doing the same thing I was doing, which was importing expensive leather goods and uh, beating the import tax by claiming it as their own, she was arrested. She lost her luggage at JFK Airport, but she continued on, our, on her itinerary to LAX. They found professionally sewn in the walls of her suitcase uh, narcotics, basically what happened to me. And when he told me that story about the Swedish girl, I felt relieved. I figured, okay, now that you guys got the real drug smuggler, what are you gonna do to help me get out of here? 
And he says that if this was uh, happening in America, you'd be going home tonight. But because it's here in Pakistan, you still have to go through the legal system. Eleven and a half months goes by, and I've been going back and, court, back and forth to court uh, so many times. Sometimes the judge wouldn't show up. Most of the time, uh, the other lawyer wouldn't show up, or my own lawyer wouldn't show up, or the witnesses wouldn't show up. The embassy figured, okay, well, Eric's innocent, so this is what we're going to do to help him out. They had somehow talked to the judge. The judge was going to give me a two-year prison sentence, and with time, time and good behavior and some remissions, I was only going to spend about one year, two months in jail. But here was the catch. I would have to plead guilty for a crime I didn't commit. Now, I thought about this. I had some time to think about it, and I didn't want to plead guilty for a crime I didn't commit. I had already been made fun of. I'd had my life stripped from me. And I knew that if I pled guilty for a crime I didn't commit, it would eat at me. So the interpreter for the embassy, a guy named Afzal, who came with the consulars usually, he says to me, Eric, what's worth more to you, your pride or your freedom? That made my decision very easy for me because my pride is worth a hell of a lot more to me than my freedom. I refused to plead guilty, knowing that I was facing life or death. The judge gave me seven years, but seven years I could do. Seven years I was, I was mentally prepared for. So I was happy, I was. I became friends with a lot of different people. I became friends with the future prime minister of Pakistan. I became friends with the, the, the hijackers from the Pan Am hijacking of 86, the people that were responsible for 23 deaths in prison. But in jail, if you, you can't really pick your friends, you're just grateful for having them. Because we were foreigners, that's what we had to, we had to bond because of that. It's, re it's really just you against the Pakistanis, but the Palestinians, those guys would become my brothers in jail. They would end up saving my life more times than one. When riots would happen, they would stand side by side with me and they would fight. I had a knife in my stomach and one in my shoulder because there was a hit on me and it was the hijackers that helped keep anyone else off of me, so at least the fight was more fair. It would also get me a lawyer that would help represent my case and get me out of jail. December 16th comes around and I'm presented in front of the courts and I tell the judges using all the lower courts points against them um, I'm able to convince the judges that I'm innocent and the judges say to me they they believe that I'm innocent but they can't say they kept an American in jail for three years for a crime he didn't commit it makes them look bad so they said they would have to decide on the 16th I find out they decided to give me time served which is fine I never pled guilty and I got to leave that prison with my head high I know how bad it can be, and my whole life has never been a cakewalk. It's, it's never been a picnic. Everything's amazing, everything. It's the little things you're gonna miss when they're all gone. You know, if you go to jail tomorrow and you don't know when you're gonna get out, I guarantee you're gonna miss being able to say hello to someone that you thought would always be there. You're gonna miss being able to watch a sunset. You're gonna miss being able to go to the beach and just feel the ocean on your feet. You're gonna miss being able to grab a taco or or a hot dog, or you're gonna miss being able to go and watch a matinee. You're gonna miss being able to pet a dog. All that stuff is what you're gonna miss. You're not gonna miss your money. You're not gonna miss your job. You're not gonna miss what car you have or how big your house is. You're gonna miss the little freedoms that you've always taken advantage of.